In today's video, we're going to talk about basic tilapia nutrition for your homegrown tilapia and how to feed them with next to no cost to ensure that they have proper nutrition for their growth, but are also healthy for you too. Here you see a short video of a tilapia eating directly from my hand. Now at the moment, the fish is eating some expired wakame, which is a Japanese seaweed product used to make sushi usually. But if you live in a coastal area, you can actually use certain kinds of natural seaweed found at low tide to feed your tilapia too. Tilapia are omnivores, so they need a balance of plant material, seeds, and protein from a few different sources. Now here you're looking at a tank of about 30 blue tilapia that I bought as an experimental mixed sex batch at roughly half an inch to one inch size. They're going crazy over a mixed feed that I created using a number of different ingredients listed here, including some bait fish size smaller fish I caught that I that did not get used, some frozen seafood from the freezer, which was getting a bit old for human consumption, some flaxseed for extra omega fatty acids, seaweed and algae, which are also excellent in higher percentage omega sources. Not to mention binder, including wheat flour, starch, and other ingredients. After freezing all the ingredients and blending in a dedicated older blender I got from Craigslist, I dried it in the microwave, cut it up into pieces, and left it to finish drying on racks outside. The key to feeding fingerlings is a balance of basic nutritional requirements. I compiled this basic chart which averaged data from several different sources. So you can see the younger fish tend to need protein a lot more. When they get older, this protein requirement goes down a bit. I supplement their fish feed, which tends to sink to the bottom, with some raw plant and algae, which tends to float or at least have neutral buoyancy, and it's easier for the larger fish to eat. This includes duckweed, green algae, which have cultured from nearby ponds, and other things that I know are tolerant to colder northern weather, but are also digestible. And here you can see, after just a few weeks, how big the fish get, and how active they are considering how big they are. After the fish get large enough, I move them to bigger tanks or food grade barrels, and I use the wastewater to supplement a hydroponic system I have. And after a few months, some of them will start doing their mating rituals and I'll move them to dedicated smaller tanks and start this cycle again.